Hello YouTube, Robert Alvarez, the Psychic Witch, also known as Mr. Lighting and a Fan. I didn't even acknowledge what today's date is yet. Um, I've, I've done two videos so far, we're going to do seven today. So um, today is Monday, September 4th, 2023. In both the United States and in Canada, today is Labor Day. And uh, this is um, a national and public holiday in the United States and in Canada. Um, there is history to Labor Day, but uh, in the United States at least, Labor Day seems to have dissolved into going to the beach one last time and um, taking advantage of some massive sales. So, And if you want to learn more about Labor Day, I mean, there's the internet. What can I say? But on a lighter note, and on a more fun note, um, this is the video for Llewellyn's 2023 tarot calendar, September 2023 entry. And of course, I'm going to have Drake do a close-up of the gorgeous, gorgeous cover of the front of the calendar. I love, love, love this royal purple with the gold trim. And um, it just makes me happy. It's a, it's a little beat up because, you know, it's for this year and we're in September. And this is the back. And I'm going to have Drake do a quick close-up of the September 2023 entry. There is no spread for this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, read the articles, share my insights, talk about the card that's depicted, mention the deck, all that of the good stuff, and we'll take it from there. Sound good? Sound good. So we have the focus on the Ten of Swords from the Gregory Scott Tarot. By the way, when I was reading, when I first read the description of this tarot deck, it mentioned Gregory Scott's YouTube channel. Do any of you watch Gregory Scott's YouTube channel? I'm asking because I never heard of him before. Um, I think it was in um, one of Llewellyn's catalog magazines. And then I think I watched one of his videos. I don't remember, to be honest, to be completely honest. Um, so I am curious if any of you have the Gregory Scott Tarot and or if you watch Gregory Scott's YouTube videos. We will also talk about uh, the symbol, one of the symbols in this Tarot X Ten of Swords card, the Numbers and Suits article, and of course the Western Astrology article, which I must say remains one of my personal favorite um, additions to the Llewellyn, uh, to the Llewellyn tarot calendars. I saw that and that made me so, so happy. Um, and it reminded me of the importance of including astrological information in my readings, which I do, I, I do pretty much all the time, quite frankly. Um, but yeah, so let's start with the Ten of Swords from the Gregory Scott Tarot. In the words of the Barbara Moore, the situation may be more complicated in your head than in reality. Too much analysis forms knots and can hide the true issue. Untangle your thoughts and focus on facts. Things may be simpler than you thought. How many of you out there in YouTube land are masters of complicating your lives? And you don't have to answer that because I'm not expecting you to answer that. It, but um, I still remember years ago when I first began receiving intuitive insights about Western astrology. What came to me almost immediately was that the people born under the sun signs Taurus, Cancer, Scorpio, and Capricorn are masters of complicating their lives. And my empowering mind was like, well, if they have that quality, then they also have it within them to create simplicity and effortlessness in their lives as well. And they also have the most trust issues. Oh, and by the way, I have Sun, Mercury, and Venus in Capricorn. I have Jupiter in Scorpio, and I was raised by a Sun sign Scorpio. So, yeah. And the polar opposite of Capricorn is Cancer, so there you go. Oh, and I have one planet in Taurus, which is the polar opposite of Scorpio, and that's Saturn sign. So there you go. So, sometimes things really are simpler than 
we initially realize. And the symbol, the mask. This mask reminds us that appearances can be deceiving, and there are at least two sides to every story. The situation may seem like a tragedy, but is it? I, I'm, I'm smirking because Drake has been in the habit of saying that something is a tragedy or a travesty, and I look at him like he's some piss-poor excuse for a soap opera star. Oh, that's a travesty. Oh, that's a tragedy. And I just look at him like, shut up, bitch. Come on. No tragedy, no travesty. Shut up. Anyway, so, yeah. The situation may seem like a tragedy, but is it? You know, <laughs> that reminds me. So, I think everybody who does not live under a rock and has not been living under a rock for the last century or so is familiar with Cher, or at least has heard of her, listened to her music, blah blah blah. And I remember there was a quote in her book, her autobiographical book, and the quote went, you know, so many women get bent out of shape over nothing and then they marry them. And I laughed. I was actually browsing the book at a Barnes & Noble bookseller store and I started laughing and people were looking at me like, what's so funny? I'm like, let me read to you what's so funny. One person was not laughing because she was the one, she was one of those that, that got, you know, heartbroken and cried and got bent out of shape over nothing and then they, she married nothing. Anyway, how much you want to bet she's still married to nothing, but that, hey, hey, that's another topic for another video for another day. I don't do those kinds of videos, but I digress. Numbers and suits. In tarot, the numbers and the suits have meaning. To learn the meanings of the minor arcana, combine the suit and the number. Each of the suits has different qualities and will react differently in the energy of the number. Wands and swords are active and fast moving. Cups and pentacles are passive and slow. Odd numbers are more active or disruptive, while even numbers are calmer. The active energy of the swords and wands is calmed and contained in a number like four, while the cups and the pentacles will stagnate. The active energy of three helps give vibrancy to the pentacles and cups, while pushing the wands and swords toward an edgy, frenetic quality. The tens bring the suits to their natural conclusion. The active wands and swords collapse under their own energy, while the cups and pentacles blossom into their full potential. Now, right away, there are some things that I feel the need to say. So first of all, as far as I'm concerned, the Barbara Moore can do no wrong. She can do no wrong. But I can easily see how some people would find some of what I just read and some of what's written here a bit problematic. So first and foremost, let me just say that the suits of the minor arcana have their corresponding astrological element. Now, traditionally, wands correspond to the fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And in Western astrology, those signs are masculine polarity. And what that means is that their energy, their, their energy signature, if you will, is more outer-directed, and more masculine, masculine. And I use quotation marks because, you know, let's face it, even in this day and age, in the 21st century, people have very specific and fixed ideas about what is masculine and what is feminine. You know, women are not supposed to swear and they're not supposed to speak until they've been spoken to first, especially by a man. And a man is not supposed to wear pink. So we have you know, we as the being human still have these very fixed and limited ideas about what is masculine and what is feminine. And I'm not going to get into gender identity. I'm not going to get into pronouns. I'm just going to focus on the fact that there are people who have masculine energy and there are people that have feminine energy. And there are people that are more outer directed and more active physically and mentally, and there are people that are more inner-directed and inner-oriented, 
and that doesn't make them less feminine or more masculine or less feminine. It just means that these are the designations in Western astrology. Keep in mind, Chinese astrology has five elements and no polarities, as far as I can tell. I don't know as much about Chinese astrology as I could. I am long overdue to learn Chinese astrology in earnest. And there is also a school of thought that says that um, the suits, the, the numbers of the minor arcana, or specifically the pip cards, correspond to their major arcana counterparts. So all of the aces of the tarot, the ace of wands, the ace of cups, the ace of swords, and the ace of pentacles, have the energy of key one, the magician. All of the twos in the minor arcana, the two of wands, the two of cups, the two of swords, and the two of pentacles, have the carrying energy of key two, the high priestess card, and on down the line. So there, there's a lot to be said about these numerological associations, or rather, these numerical associations. And for the record, you know, I've met several people who either have Sun in Aries or Moon in Aries, and they're incredibly, highly intuitive, and I would even say super psychic. Um, so do not automatically assume, don't, in other words, don't make the same mistake I did, because I remember thinking, oh, fire signs are nothing when it comes to intuition. Boy, was I proven wrong, okay? Wrong. Seriously, wrong. Astrology. Uh, Drake, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Drake startled me for a little bit, so I'm making sure that he's okay. As I was saying, astrology. This card, the Ten of Swords, is ruled by the sun in Gemini. The, that's funny, because earlier today, my phone reading was with a sun sign Gemini. <laughs> I love it. The clarity and awareness of the sun is usually a wonderful gift. However, when subjected to the conflict and contradictions of Gemini, thoughts get twisted. We think ourselves into torturous knots and frightening corners. We second-guess every decision or action and deny ourselves any sense of completion. Something that seemed like a good idea at the time devolves into a ruinous situation either in reality or in the heightened alertness of our mind. You know, and I want to say, especially because, you know, as somebody who's been a lover of astrology, especially Western astrology, for more than two decades, I have never once ever cared for the common expression about Geminis, Geminis are two-faced. Please don't ever say that in my presence, because I do not like it, I find it disrespectful, I find it irreprehensible, I find it disgusting, I find it very disgusting. And although I do not specialize in astrological consultations in my life and in my professional career as a psychic reader and energy healing practitioner, there have been occasions that people have come to me for astrological consultations. And I will say, and I will reiterate, that to know oneself truly is more than just your sun sign. If you know your sun sign, that's great. If you know your rising sign, that's even better. If you know your moon sign, that's the best lot of all. But knowing just your sun sign is not going to tell you shit. And I personally and professionally would not even begin to do a romantic or professional compatibility analysis unless I knew the Sun, Rising, Venus, Moon, and Mars signs of both individuals or all of the individuals involved. There'd be no point. Because I could easily say that, oh, well, if your Sun sign is Gemini and your Rise and your this person's Sun sign is Scorpio, there's no connection. Nothing could be further from the truth. What's, let's say, for example, that sun sign Gemini had a moon in Scorpio, and let's say that sun sign Scorpio had a moon in Sagittarius, the polar opposite of, of Gemini. 
there's automatically going to be a, an attraction and a connection, whether it's professional or personal or both. I remember years ago, I met an amazing couple. Um, both of them were married. Both of them owned their own business together. Both of them worked in chiropractic. They slept together. They worked together. They went to the cinema together. They went out to eat together. And when I first met them, I now knew what it was like to see two people in a truly loving, and devoted and functional marriage. And I was in my early 20s at the time. I'm gonna say I was around 25 or 26. So approximately 25 years ago was the first time in my life that I met people that were in loving, devoted and functional marriages. And prior to that, I never knew anybody who was in a loving, devoted and functional marriage. I met people who were in loving, functional, and devoted romantic relationships, not marriages. But more often than not, I met people in dysfunctional romantic relationships and dysfunctional marriages. And I met more than a few divorced people, but I digress. So it was fascinating to see these two people, this, these two married people, this husband and wife, who were just intelligent and talented and devoted and in this beautiful, functional, loving, healing marriage. It was beautiful. And I was like, oh, so that's what that looks like, because I'd never seen it before. So, and I don't know what their astrological placements are. In fact, I don't even remember their respective birthdays. So do not assume that just because somebody's sun sign is this, and this other person's sun sign is that, that they're automatically compatible or incompatible, because again, to know true compatibility, again, whether it's professional or personal, one must examine the Sun, Rising, Moon, Venus, and Mars signs of both parties or all parties. And if it's a professional relationship, absolutely the Mercury signs and the Jupiter signs as well. And those of you out in YouTube land who are professional astrologers, you're more than welcome to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not saying that you cannot just go by the sun sign. I'm just saying that you will not get the complete picture with just the sun signs because you just won't. I am forever thankful to Llewellyn Publications for publishing the Llewellyn's Tarot Calendar. I look forward to purchasing the one for 2024 and I am happily continuing this series of videos um, and yes, I, I, during my sabbatical, when I did my A Break in August video, this is one series of videos that I was considering offering to the chopping block, but I decided that I really love this video series more than any other. And I love it to the point that if nobody ever comments on these videos, I'm okay with it. That's not the case with all my videos, but with this particular series, my love of this topic is so there and so high that it's like, oh yeah. And, you know, as I've said in, on numerous occasions, it was 10 years, one full decade from the last time that Llewellyn published a tarot-themed annual to the first time that this series of tarot-themed calendars, that this annual came into publication. So I waited, so the person that I am, the tarot man, um, the tarot lover, the one that's in lust with the tarot, the one that owns as many tarot decks, the one that owns more tarot decks than p pieces of underwear, you know, that I happily struggled and patiently struggled for Llewellyn to have another tarot-themed annual for 10 years is a big deal. Because, again, and I will say this ad infinitum until... Llewellyn introduces another one. There is only one tarot-themed annual with Llewellyn Publications. There are a bazillion Western astrology ones. There are a bazillion witchy and magical ones. They have started increasing the number of herbal and um, plant medicine-themed annuals, but there is only this one. This is the only tarot-themed annual that Llewellyn Publications offers, 
and it has been the only one that they have offered since 2017 because it was either in July or August of 2017 when they published Llewellyn's 2018 tarot calendar. Yes, exactly. Pop, pop, bitch, bitch, okay? Boom, boom. Pow, pow. So, yes. So, yes. And the fact that they are continuing to publish this means so much to me. And I am going to say it again. They will continue publishing this tarot-themed calendar, this tarot-themed annual, this only tarot-themed annual that Llewellyn Publications offers at the present time, if people keep buying it, if people keep giving it as gifts, if people keep stocking it, if people keep talking about it and doing videos about it and writing about it. And I will tell you that I love seeing this calendar. I don't see it all the time, but any time that you don't have it in your local bookstore, you can absolutely request to have it. I still remember the person who contacted me who, in her comment, wrote that she does not buy anything online. So I said to her, you know, check your local metaphysical store, check your local Barnes & Noble booksellers because I have found this at metaphysical stores, I have found this at witch shops, I have found this at Barnes & Noble bookseller stores, but absolutely, if your bookstore does not carry this, you can absolutely request it. Because the worst thing that'll happen is they'll say, no, I'm sorry, we can't get that for you. And then you go to somebody else who will. That's how I look at it, because this calendar means so much to me. I love this calendar so, so much. I really do. I'm very happy it's in existence. I cannot thank Llewellyn Publications enough. Seeing this again and again, year after year, has made me so happy. And we have come to the point that if they stop publishing, I made my peace with it. I did. You know? I won't do I won't I won't do a, a change.org petition to continue the publication of these calendars. I won't boycott Llewellyn publications. You know, I won't do any of that. Because I said if they publish it for at least five years, I'll be happy. 2018 was the first one. 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. This is 2023. 2024 was published either in July or last month, in August. So they've, they've made me happy. Everything else is extra gravy or extra whipped cream or extra sauce, okay? But they made me happy. They made me supremely, delightfully, lavishly, deliciously happy. And I am forever thankful to Llewellyn Publications for that. And with that being said, thank you again to Llewellyn Publications for continuing to publish Llewellyn's tarot calendars, for continuing to publish a tarot-themed annual in an ocean of astrology-themed and witchy-themed and plant and herbal and essential oil um, and animal-themed calendars and annuals. Um, I am most thankful for this one tarot-themed annual, and believe me, I am. I am. And of course, thank you to the Barbara Moore for writing the insights, spreads, and tips the subtitle of all of these calendars. And of course, thank you so much to all of you in YouTube land for honoring who I am and what I do, for honoring Drake, more commonly known as my awesome audiovisual person, for my YouTube videos and everything he does as well. And as always, thank you for all the likes, thank you for all the comments, thank you for all the shares. Whether it's social media platforms that I haven't used in years, such as Facebook, or social media platforms that I've only started using, like Reddit. And um, thank you, of course, for subscribing to my YouTube channel. And an extra big and beautiful and bountiful thank you to those of you who have scheduled your sessions. And to those of you who bought me a coffee. I wish all of you a beautiful night, a wonderful week. Enjoy the weather wherever you are on planet Earth, or not on planet Earth as the case may be. And if it's not to your liking, then make it as beautiful for yourself as possible. Have a good night, and stay tuned for the next video.